activist Venezuela's president, Hugo Chavez, again lashed out at the United States. He told supporters in Caracas it was plausible that the U.S. government was involved in the September 11th attacks to justify its subsequent offensives in Afghanistan and Iraq. Probably the most revealing of these similarities between then and now is the apparent trade agreement between hostile countries. Whilst researching his book, Ralph René stumbled upon the same question that many propagandists love to beg. If NASA faked the moon landings, why were the Soviets reluctant to blab that all over the world? Whilst reading the October 27th, 1972 issue of the National Review, René stumbled upon an article entitled Economics of the Wheat Deal, which provided him an answer to this question. Whilst NASA was faking moon flights, the United States, for no apparent reason, began to sell wheat to the Soviet Union. The Russians could have exposed us any time, but they didn't. We began to sell them wheat at less than market value. Remember they had to, they had to get the National Guard to load the ships up there because the, the stevedores, the Union stevedores said, oh no, we ain't feeding these people. Mm. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, the Army and the National Guard started loading those ships. And at the same time, the price of our bread jumped 25% overnight. Because we had to pay for it, of course. You know, first did a great evil, and uh, here, we, here we go feeding them. So they could have, that was the price we paid for them not exposing us. Because they could have done it in five minutes flat. The USSR was sold one-fourth of the United States' entire wheat harvest for $1.63 a bushel. This was wonderful news for Mother Russia, who was expected to be 10 to 25 percent below last year's wheat crop. The weather conditions had made their wheat unfit for human consumption. In addition, according to Time magazine, as early as October 1963, a good six years before the moon landing ever took place, President John F. Kennedy had sold as much as 15 million tons of wheat to the Soviet Union. All these years, we've still been selling them wheat real cheap. Mm. They were the enemy. You starve your fucking enemy out, you don't feed them. Likewise, today, in spite of this apparent race for military supremacy, China is now the United States' greatest trading partner. Many American businesses are stocked full of Chinese merchandise and is subsequently sucking the American economy dry and costing thousands of people their jobs. And when it comes to horrific acts of violence against its own people, the Chinese get off scot-free. China has been dropped from the United States list of human rights violators, while Syria, Uzbekistan and Sudan have been added to it. The U.S. State Department has been unable to explain China's omission. When China won the bid for this year's Olympics, it gave an undertaking that the Games would be an opportunity to develop human rights. And the US State Department, which compiles the annual blacklist, concedes that hasn't happened. If you look at the uh, introduction to the report, the uh, uh, describes China, that its human rights record uh, remain poor. Yet the State Department was unable to explain why China had been removed from its list this year after featuring as one of the worst offenders in the previous two years. We are aware of human rights abuses taking place daily in China, whether that's through execution, unfair trials, torture in prisons, and the denial of people's freedom of expression on a daily basis. The list of top offenders includes well-known US antagonists North Korea, Iran, Syria and Cuba. Some believe that politics play a large role in deciding which countries are included. Well, China actually has been referred to as the U.S.'s banker. They have a $250 billion trade surplus with the United States. Um, as we know, the U.S. economy isn't going gangbusters at the moment, whereas China, on the other hand, is booming. Due to these deals, the United States currently has a $250 billion trade deficit. Remember, the Americans are dealing with a country that does not have as high safety standards as most other countries. For instance, in 2007 alone, major recalls on children's toys and pet foods occurred. 
The recalled products both came from China and affected many of the world's most well-known companies, such as Mattel. And yet, we have many American politicians saying that they feel the free trade will still work. For instance, current American presidential candidate Barack Obama has said that while he does not like the North American Free Trade Agreement, he is still for free trade. It comes as no surprise why so many politicians believe free trade will work. I'm sure it will work in keeping the Chinese quiet when the time comes for NASA to fake their next space flight. Well, why don't the other space nations expose these crimes? Well, just take a look around. All other nations involved in the exploration of space, Canada, Japan, Brazil, India and Europe, are all working together with the United States in the construction of the International Space Station. And many of these countries rely on the space shuttle to lift their payloads into orbit. Discovery may have been given the thumbs up for tomorrow, but the aging shuttle fleet is on its last legs. Due for retirement in 2010, there's growing pressure to ground the shuttles early. But that would create another problem. Without them, there would be no way of delivering parts needed to build the International Space Station. The shuttle is the only spacecraft big enough to carry these parts scheduled for delivery over the next four years. Without them, the station would not fulfill its scientific promise and NASA would not fulfill its promises to international partners. That will permanently alienate their international partners on the space station, many of whom have made enormous investments in building components for the space station. They have far too much to lose from exposing NASA. Even China's new partner has its fingers in American apple pie. There is boring soil. Well, don't move it till I see it. Hey, it is! I can see it from here. It's boring. Whilst the Apollo 17 astronauts were deceiving the world, back on the ground, the United States and the Soviets were discussing plans for what would be the first in a series of joint space flights. Well, the prime purpose of the Apollo-Soyuz joint mission is to prove out a uh, compatible docking system and demonstrate that we have compatible operational procedures that will let two different countries dock in space. I think more than that, it has a, certainly a symbolic meaning of these two large powers uh, learning to work together in space, which I believe are the new seas of mankind, the new frontiers, and work out solutions to problems we're in uh, Although we're very competitive, uh, we can still be cooperative and assist each other. And I think that this Apollo-Soyuz program stands for just that. First it was the Apollo-Soyuz test project. Then came the Shuttle Mir program. And now, Russia is also contributing towards the completion of the International Space Station. As Michael Collins writes on page 275 of Carrying the Fire, I don't think the fire delayed the first lunar landing one day because it took until mid-1969 to get all the problems solved in areas completely unrelated to the fire. Likewise, I doubt the Columbia disaster delayed America's manned exploration one day because while the shuttle was grounded, these kind Russians were more than happy to give American astronauts a ride on the Soyuz. We cannot accept and we will not accept states that harbor, finance, train, or equip the agents of terror. Those nations that violate this principle will be regarded as hostile regimes. And yet, nations like China are excluded from this category, even though they have done unspeakable things to their own people and are in league with regimes who really do have weapons of mass destruction and have had these weapons of mass destruction long before the invasion of Iraq. This is North Korea's dictator meeting China's president in Pyongyang last year. China is North Korea's oldest ally and for now at least it's sticking by its friend. Conjecture abounds over whether yesterday's small earthquake was really a nuclear test. Here's how scientists in South Korea think it happened. 
down a deep shaft in the remote mountains in the northeast of the country, the setting for a nuclear blast with shockwaves felt around the world. More than other countries, South Korea knows that danger lurks across its border. The world's largest standing army, and now with nuclear weapons. There's also the possibility of a North Korean nuclear strike. Three months ago, Pyongyang tested some missiles. The mid-range ones could easily hit its immediate neighbours. The long-range ones could make it to Australia. Kim Jong-il has already proven his military might. All we'll need now is North Korean Sputnik and the Chinese will have made a powerful ally in the conquest of space.